those. I offer it to us now from the Gospel of John. We don't typically associate this one with a Christmas story, but here it is. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. God, and the Word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, this was he of whom I said, he who comes after me ranks ahead of me because he was before me. From his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. Law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is God, the only Son, who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known. This is the word of God for the people of God. And God is still speaking. Thanks be to God. Okay, so for all of you church liturgy buffs out there, pop quiz. Is today the second Sunday after Christmas, or is today Epiphany Sunday? Which one is it? Jess isn't here, so you can't cheat. Epiphany? Good guess. Was that what it was? I'll have to remember that next time. It's not a trick question. Because if, if, you, if you look at it technically, what was it? You think it's the same? Second Sunday after, after Christmas and Epiphany at the same time? Okay. You're, you're, you're both kind of right. If you, if you look at it technically, if, you, if you're going to look at it from a purist standpoint, Today is the second Sunday after Christmas. It is. And we're still, we're still in Christmas tide. Okay, that's why we still have the Advent wreath up. We have the Christmas decor up. But Tuesday is Epiphany. And so that's why you have some elements of Epiphany in the service. That's why we're going to sing an Epiphany hymn a little bit later. Chris is going to play We Three Kings. It says another road, I believe, on the cover of the bulletin, which refers to the different road by which the Magi returned after seeing the Christ child. This is the kind of stuff that makes us preachers get really excited. <laughs> now, what does epiphany mean? Epiphany means manifestation or appearing. It's that time in the church year when we celebrate the revelations of Jesus as the Son of God, and we look at stories like the adoration of the Magi, and the baptism of Jesus during Epiphany. But even today, it's technically the second Sunday after Christmas, even though that's what it's called today, a lot of churches are celebrating Epiphany today. And they're done with Christmas entirely. They're moving on. But not us. <laughs> it's still Christmas in this house. We're not ready to move on. We're going to hold on to all of the hope and peace and joy and love that we can. Because once those Christmas decorations go away, once that tree and the Advent wreath come down, once the Christmas cards come off of the refrigerator, once the snow globes and the nutcrackers and the little drummer boy music box are all put back in the attic, the spirit of Christmas is gone. 
And that makes things difficult, because once Christmas tide is over, then this theological notion that God, the Word, became flesh and lived among us, that notion goes back to being just some abstract concept. And epiphany means that we got to start all over again. Moving on means that we have to figure out this whole God with us thing all over again. And without the spirit of Christmas, it's really difficult to make that abstract concept real again. No, we're not ready to move on. I've been thinking about it for the last few days like this. One of our church members, Kathy, shared with us on the email prayer chain that her Aunt Elaine died earlier this week. And she said that Aunt Elaine is the matriarch of her family, right? So Kathy said that with Aunt Elaine gone, that means that Kathy and her generation are going to have to step up for the sake of the whole family. Some of us in this room can relate to this feeling. And she said, those are some big, loving shoes to fill. The same thing happened when my grandma B died a couple of years ago, and it didn't hit me until we were at the graveside. My cousin Brian, he stood up and he spoke some very kind words about my grandmother and what she meant to our whole family, what she was all about. And then he pointed to her children to my Aunt Gloria, to my dad, and to their brothers. And Kathy's prayer concern made me remember this. It was as if my cousin Brian was saying, now it's up to them. Now it's up to them to keep who Grandma B was and what she meant to us and to keep all of that hope and peace and joy and love that she brought to us alive or else it's all going to just fade into this Abstract concept. Well, who is ever ready to move on if it's up to us to fill those kinds of big, loving shoes? That fearful, timid feeling is what sits between the second Sunday after Christmas and Epiphany. Because once Jesus is born anew into our hearts, we've got to go about the daunting task of stepping up and revealing Jesus to the world. We've got to take an abstract concept and bring it to conception. Is anyone ready for that? Absolutely. Because here's the good news. In the beginning was the Word, and that Word became flesh and lived among us. Now that the time of baby Jesus is almost gone, It's not up to us to replace Christmas and all that Christmas stands for with new things. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. Hope and peace and joy and love remain. They've been there from the beginning. The vision of God in Christ Jesus has been with us since the dawn of creation. In the beginning was the Word, God with us. And that Word stood for freedom and justice, and nonviolence, and peace, and compassion, and inclusiveness, and forgiveness, and redemption. And that word envisioned an earth in which everyone has a fair and equitable share of creation. The word has not left us at the close of Christmas tide. We are not being called to fill the big loving shoes of God and Christ Jesus. No, the good news is, that we are being called to live out what that word stands for and what that word envisions so that the word would be made flesh, embodied again and again and again. Our calling is to move the notion of God with us from mere concept to conception. We are not Christian epicists. After all, we are followers of Jesus Christ. And as such, our calling is to step up and to embody the foundational truth of our faith. The Word became flesh and lived among us. The Word became flesh and lived and breathed among us. The Word became flesh and lived and breathed and worked among us. As it was in the beginning, it is now 
and ever shall he. So through Kathy's generation and her family, we'll see Aunt Elaine. But she was carrying something that came to her from someone who came before her, and so on, and so on, and so on. And through my dad's generation, my family, we'll see Grandma B. And through everyone who calls Jesus Lord, we will see the Word of God living among us as more than just some abstract concept. It's simple, really. Here's an example of what it looks like. Some of you may have heard this story this week. There's a woman named Srirupa Dasgupta, and she lives in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. And in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, there's an active refugee community from South Asia, from Central Africa, from all over. And Dasgupta was educated and trained for a career in high tech. She'd worked her way up from software engineer to managing a healthcare company. But she also grew up hearing stories about her grandparents and about how they were refugees about how they had to flee what is now Bangladesh in 1947. And so, Dasgupta left her high-tech career in 2010, and she opened a catering business. And that catering business had a social mission of hiring refugees and people who are homeless. And then, the name of the catering business was Upohar, which is the Bengali word for gift. And last April, Dasgupta expanded her catering business and opened a restaurant under the same name. And when she did that, she also expanded the mission. All of her employees, all of the marginalized, are paid double the minimum wage. doesn't matter how our business is doing. They all get paid the minimum wage. And when she's asked about double the minimum wage, and when she's asked about the restaurant and whether it's going to succeed, she says... I'm just going to focus on making a difference right here. And if it grows beyond that, that's wonderful. But if it doesn't, then it will have made an impact on my neighbors. That's the idea. That's real. The Word became flesh and lived among us. The concept became conception and had an impact on us. The love of God in Christ became embodied through the lives of people who followed Jesus, and that word changed everything. That's what we're being called to step up and to continue. Some of you may have heard of Barbara Brown Taylor. She suggests in one of her sermons that each one of us has a gift for bringing the multifaceted word of God to life. And what I mean when I say multifaceted word of God I mean that it has different meanings for each of us. For you, that word could be compassion. It could be justice. It could be generosity, patience, love. But Barbara Brown Taylor says this. Until someone acts upon these words, they remain abstract concepts. They remain just very good ideas that very few people have ever seen. The moment someone acts on them, she says, the words become flesh and live and breathe and work among us. Yes, the word is embodied in the compassionate care that, a pers- that, that, that happens when someone opens their home to a broken body in need. See the parable of the Good Samaritan. Yes, the word is embodied in the extravagant feeding of people who are not in a position to cook warm meals for themselves. See the feeding of the 5,000. The word moves from mere concept to conception when it forgives the interpersonal debts between two people and embraces with love the estranged person who has come home. See the parable of the prodigal son. Now many of you know that A longtime member of this church, Walter Birch, has been on a ventilator and feeding tube at the hospital for over a week now, with his spouse, Rhoda, waiting with care at his side. Well, I see the word embodied when I walk out of the critical care unit with Rhoda so that she can greet my family and 
we find three more members of our church sitting there, and Rhoda's face just lights up, and she laughs with pure joy, and her sense of humor cuts through the darkness of her current situation so much that she says, well, preacher, the church is here. You'd better preach. Yes, the word is embodied when people who would be mortified if they were ever to be caught singing in their car at a traffic light gather in a sanctuary with a whole lot of perfect strangers on Christmas Eve night and sing by candlelight as if nobody's watching. The word is embodied when a group of church folk volunteer at the Brazos Church Pantry by doing more than just bagging groceries and conducting client interviews, but by talking with each other and by receiving strangers with compassionate kindness and genuine concern and by connecting with one another across those socioeconomic divisions drawn by a fearful, timid culture with the timeless everlasting love of God. And when a sanctuary of people from all walks of life in this Brazos Valley get together at 1030 on a Sunday morning to strengthen their hopes and their joys and their will to not just live out there in the world, but to shine and to thrive in the world, then strangers become friends. And the notion of Christian discipleship moves from an abstract concept to the conception of something real. That's what you're doing when you come to worship. So, beloved community, how is the Word of God embodied in your midst, in your everyday life? What gift do you have to pick up that everlasting Word of hope and peace and joy, and love, and make it real right now. Shall we pray? O gracious word, living and breathing and working among us in this time between Christmas tide and the epiphany season, we pray that you would give us the comfort and joy of Christmas and the epiphany revelations of your will and way right now. Encourage our gifts to make your vision for this world realized by everyone around us and empower us with the strength of will and boldness of character to move our faith in your word from mere concept to conception. We pray these things in the name of the word that was and is and evermore shall be. Amen.